Hello Power Users, Zbigniew Pukowski here and in today's episode we'll be talking about paging, about pagination in Power Automated Desktop Web Scrapping, Web Scrap, because this is a very important topic. You will encounter some form of pagination in most of the times you will need to do web scrapping and uh, the, they are very different one from each other, uh, the developers. Uh, tend to code them differently, so we will be talking about uh, example, a simple example with CSS selector we'll going to the next page. And after that, I will just show you the tools you have to work with different forms, for example, to, to loop and try to get the element value based on the page num number, the text value, because this may be important in some cases. So stay tuned, Zbigniew Bukowski in, and let's start. Okay, so I'm on the scrapthissite.com and I'm using the, the hockey forms. You can copy this website address. And from this page, I want to scrap team name, the year, the win percent ratio, and I want to use a pager, which will transfer me to the next page uh, until I'm after 25 pages and I'm already, uh, I'm, I've already scrapped all the data. Okay, so how this simple uh, flow looks. First of all, I'm launching new from instance. I'm launching the, the site. As you can see, there is, there is page number because it's uh, I'm uh, using the first page. I'm using the maximize window to avoid any mistakes and errors uh, regarding resolution, etc. Okay. And main action of, of my uh, flow is extract web data from the web page. And I'm using the, the input, which was the variable created on the launching Chrome. I'm extracting all the available data. I'm sending the physical clicks for the next page. Usually that may cause some issues if you are not using this. Uh, not all sites are working with, without the physical clicks sending to next page. And I'm just creating an Excel spreadsheet with the data. So when I'm using this action, I will open the the web life helper when I'm on the, the when I'm on the web page which I want to sc scrap. I mean it will open on the any web pages, but if I have this this pop-up open, then uh, the web helper will will open as well. Okay. So here I've already told uh, the web scrapper uh, that I want to scrap the data from this, this, and this. Let's uh, click finish now. Sorry, let's go. Let's open this again. Okay, now it's working. You have to confirm that the red border is, is visible. So I clicked here with the right mouse button. I extract the text, year and the win percent ratio. And I've also used the second row just uh, just uh, for Power Automate Desktop to know that I'm scrapping the table, not the, the hand-picked data. Okay, I need to go to Advanced Settings and set this toggle to Yes, to use the paging. Click OK and find the page uh, the paging button, which will be visible here. So this is my button. I can anchor here and set this element as a pager. So let's do this now. Let's go. Let's go back to uh, to my flow, and in here, with regular uh, extract data from web page, you won't see these three rows, these three options. I want to extract all the available data, and I want to send physical click for the next page. So it will iterate until it cannot. Uh, until the iteration is over because the element will not be visible. The power of the desktop is that smart to, to recognize this. I click save. I click finish here. And let's run it. 
it open page correctly. It iterating through the pages, as you can see. I won't bother you with this, so let's meet after 25 pages are already scrapped. And as you can see, my book already was created with all the results from the pages. Let's go, let's go. All the results are here. Great. Okay. So this was the, the first example. This is how you usually work with paging. Okay, but let's assume for a moment that we have a tougher, uh, harder example here. If, uh, for first, I, we've uh, used this button, which iterate us through each page. But sometimes, in some examples, this button won't even exist. And you would have to iterate on those buttons with the number. So you have to grab this number and you have to know how many pages are there. So in most cases, you would have the last page visible as well. So in order to do this, you would have to extract data from web page and extract the last number uh, which you would see here. And with this number, you would know how many iterations you have. So I've already created a, a, an example showing you how to iterate through pages. First, we have the launch uh, new Chrome. This is this, the same as it was. Then I'm setting the variable which will take care of iteration number and I'm setting the value for one. And I'm looping. I looped for four times, but you can loop for 24 times because you have you have 24 pages or as I already told you, you can extract the last page number and assign variable with the cell variable and you will have the number to iterate um, based on the variable because you can uh, use the variable here. But let's, let's keep, let's keep uh, four for now, just to see how it's working. And you will extract this data also, but you will extract this data uh, I'm using uh, for now a variable, you will extract this data one by one. So you have to copy the actions we already had and extract the, the same data which we already extraction. Then we're going to iterate the iteration number and add it plus one. And then by getting details on the UI element in window, let's look at this action now, UI. Mm, details UI up. We would use the, mm, the button here. So what you would like to do is to use the UI element which you have. And if you don't, then you will need to add this UI element. Mm, you see that pop-up window, the element picker. And we would just just use this um, this element with the control. As you can see, we have what is called hyperlink to. Okay, so where I have this element, I have hyperlink to, which is element I've created. I can go to the to the right part of the screen, to the UI elements, click on my hyperlink. As you can see, there are there, this is the selector and we have elements from this. But what I would like really to do is to create it with the text editor. And as you can see, I have in text editor, I have the number two. So what I need to do is to change this to, uh, for iteration number, which is my variable. I've, I want to do it again. I've already created this in um, in my hyperlink country, which use the iteration number, and this is the indication that this is a variable with the double quota. So I've just changed it uh, to for this this number. You can save this, and then you have a working selector. So this will click the the button number two. 
and then I'm clicking this 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 button, scrapping, uh, extracting the data again and again and again and again. And after the loop is ending, I'm closing the browser. So let's see how it's running. Page opened correctly. It's scrapping right now. Hopefully. <laughs> And as you could see, the button two was pressed. Now the button number three, the button number four, the button number five, and it's ended. Okay, so after this iteration, can you answer yourself, does it work correctly? You can pause the video now. And the answer is no, because you can see the data from the web page has 25 rows and three columns, which means that it only iterate once. And why is that? Because the variable data from web page was overwritten over and over and over again with each iteration. So what we can do, I propose we just keep this in Excel, which will append to the Excel, to the, to the end of the Excel. So let's go with launch Excel. Let's go with the blank document. Let's make instance visible this. And a standard new Excel process. Now variable to produce that will be an Excel instance. Now we want to, to write to Excel worksheet the data which we have. The value to write we are using the data from the web page. And the column, let's uh, not go on specified cell. First of all, yeah, yeah, I, I will get the error, but let's go with the get first, first column and first row. Let's only use the, the row. Cool. So that means that we will be writing to the first three row. We will use the first three row here. And we will use the, the A here. Cool. And let's see how it's running. As you can see, we are iterating correctly. So it means that we don't have any crucial uh, error already. Let's see how the book is working. As you can see, we got the four pages. So it iterated correctly uh, four times, which means that we are done here. What we can do, uh, we can also in advance with the blank document. We can also go and copy this to write the next worksheet and uh, write the column names if we would like. But this is not necessary for, for our, our iteration to work because it already does. So this, uh, this was the hard example of how to web scrap of the data we have uh, from the website by using the, the the selectors and iterating through each selector based on the name. You can also have other attributes like ID, like like uh, a href or something like this. So you can iterate through many of different attributes. But you now know how it's working. So so it's great. I hope that you, this was something useful and you learned something new. And if you do, if you did, so you can like, subscribe, etc. And you can look at my other videos because I have many Power Automate Desktop and Power Platform, Power Apps uh, content, uh, generally Microsoft content uh, on my channel. So it was a pleasure and see you soon. Zbigniew Pukowski out.